Hello, hello. Good morning, everybody. Happy Saturday. Let me do my quick audio check real quick. All right. Sounds like I'm good to go. Let's lower it right here. All right. Check this out. Yep. Good to go. Hello, everybody. Happy Saturday. Welcome to Romero Threads on YouTube, where it's all about embroidery. So today we started one hour, uh, you know, late just because I'm actually on duty. I'm actually on duty right now. So I had to take care of some stuff early in the morning, but we are here now. We're good to go. All right. Uh, I got everything. Um, got the hooping. All right. We got the Embroider machine ready to go. All right, so we're gonna do everything, all the steps. Today's topic is Greek letter embroidery. All right, very, very popular. And when we talk about uh, Greek letter applique, okay, uh, this is actually, it, it could be anything, right? Anything that has a shape, any letter, varsity letter, uh, designs, logos, okay? So it's not only for Greek letters, okay? Even though we're gonna kinda uh focus kind of in that area all the information that we learn today okay can also be uh used all right in other types of designs all right so very useful all right uh just real quick uh i like the reason why i like applique and i'm pretty sure a lot of you uh might share the same uh thoughts also but uh if you want to do big right big logos big designs jackets front chest back uh back jackets okay usually it doesn't make sense to go in the hundred thousands of stitches all right sometimes it makes more sense to do it uh applique style that way stitch count could go low all right but boldness right goes very very high up all right so that's why applique is very popular all right especially with fraternities okay uh when i was when I was an active member of my fraternity, I remember going to the the lady right outside of school, right? And I would see how she would make uh, the letters, okay? And I, I always uh, I always liked, when I used to order my Greek letters, I used to like uh, just kind of playing around with different colors, all right? Trying to see which colors uh, go with what, all right? So um, usually fraternities, sororities, they all have their... They, of course, they have their 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 official colors, but then they like to kind of experiment with other colors, all right? So if you are doing any type of uh, applique work, all right, it's always good to learn uh, color theory, what color goes with what color, school colors, okay, popular colors. And that way, if you do pick up on a popular color, you kind of stack up on uh, fabric and all that good stuff, all right? So let me write down in the comments. Let me know where you're. Let me know where you're watching from. Let me know where you are watching from. All right. I'm very excited about this topic today. All right. Uh, let me know where you're watching from. All right. Bam, bam. All right. Good morning. Uh, we got Barb in the house. Good morning, Barb north central minnesota all right Rhonda. good morning from texas all right levite all right we got crystal good morning morning beverly all right right michael so handmade creation bevy jean good morning all right maisha walker all right good morning good morning william good morning from prosper texas go razorbacks all right marisa from southern california all right, right. We got packed house today. Janet from Augusta, Georgia. All right. Morning, Jesse. All right. T Towns from Toledo, Ohio. All right, right. Uh, Kanan Simmons. Good morning. All right. So, good morning to everybody. All right. Uh, so today, today's uh, my goal for today is kind of break it down, break applicate down into uh. Uh, three different ways, okay, three different ways um, 
I'm going to kind of show it. Okay. I'm going to show it on a picture. So here on my, uh, right here, you see the actual letters that I stitched out here. Okay. We're going to go double applique. Okay. I think, uh, single applique, very straightforward, double applique. It's just an extra layer of, uh, of steps that we got to do. But I remember when I was ordering my, uh, my letters, my Greek letters, I always stacked them up. All right. They just stand out. And once again, any logos, okay. Logos, you put a double stack applique. It just gives it boldness. All right. It just makes it stand out. Okay. And really it's just an extra step. All right. It's not like you're going, you're adding so many other steps to add a double stack. All right. So we're going to talk about how to double stack, but I, what I want to show is uh, I want to show it on paper, right? I want to I want to kind of draw it out, uh, go over like a game plan. Okay, once I draw it out, kind of uh, go through the the drawing part. And then we're gonna take it into the software, all right? So here, see if I got it here. All right, so here I got the same design on my uh, digitizing software. All right, it kind of matches. Let me see. Yep. All right, so it matches what I got right here. All right, so we're gonna take it to the digitizing and then we're gonna actually uh, stitch it out. All right, uh, it is, I think this one here, uh, since it was full sand stitch, it's a uh, 23,000, if I'm not mistaken. Hold on, I got it right here. Let me see how many stitches. We are at 22,000, all right, 22,000. So instead of doing a 22,000 stitch, we'll do a letter, all right? We'll choose a letter. From this and I can actually show you uh, all the steps how we go about okay and one thing that I want to show you today on this applique I'm going to do it uh, assuming that we do not have a cutter or a laser all right we're gonna hand cut it and I'm gonna show you how I efficiently all right because really that's the time consuming part is cutting your fabric that could be the very very time consuming when doing applique so I'm gonna show you how I go about it all right. Uh, it's a very, um, very close to fail proof. OK, very close to fail proof. Uh, of course, you could still fail, right, because you can do something wrong. But I'm going to show you how to easily cut it very easily. All right. So it looks nice and clean without a cutter. All right. Now, one thing before we get into the actual uh, analyzing of our letters. All right. Uh, that's so like I was saying, that's really the time consuming part is the cutting portion, cutting your fabric. All right. That's really, I would say, step number one. Uh, there was going to be four steps. OK, so today we're going to talk about four steps when doing applique. Step number one is preparing your fabric. OK, so if if you have a cutter, of course, you would use a cutter if you have a laser. Right. And you would kind of get this extra equipment. If this is what you do, like if this is your niche, if if applique is your niche, then you're definitely in the area where you're using a cutter, okay, or you're using a laser to cut your fabric, all right? Um, so step number one, all right. But today we're gonna hand cut it. I'm gonna show you a very efficient, quick way to do it, all right. So step number one out of the four, first thing, preparing your uh, fabric. Let me fix my camera right here. All right, step number one, prepare your fabric, cut it. And then um, two, we want to make our placement stitch. So we're going we're gonna to lay out our placement stitch. That tells us where to put our fabric. Okay, then number three, our third stitch, we're going we're gonna to put a tack down stitch. So we want to make sure our fabric attaches to our garment. And then the fourth one is our sand stitch. That's the final stitch, okay? And we're going to talk about um, using a sand stitch or a zigzag stitch. Right, depending on which route you want to go to. And one thing about applique, okay, there is no one way to do applique. Everybody does applique different depending on your quantity. What's your quantity? If you got a hundred orders of 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 Greek letters or any type of applique, all right, it might not be wise enough to hand cut all your fabric. All right. In that, in that, in that situation, you might want to go with a cutter, okay. You might want to go with the laser. All right. So a lot of these uh, whatever steps you take, it depends on, you know, what uh, conditions that you're working with. All right. Quantity. What's your quantity? 
price wise are you charging very cheap right if you're charging very cheap if you're trying to compete with somebody and you bring your prices all the way down then it might not make sense to go full satin okay so like here uh the the example that i have here this is full satin okay it takes a little bit more time here we're looking at twenty-two thousand stitches all right and then it's pretty big so you can see i put the ruler here so you could kind of get a a reference this is a foot long ruler so we're 12 inches across and the height is four inches height so this is kind of like uh standard four inches on uh, greek letters it's pretty standard all right now uh one other thing that i want to add uh greek letters if you do go uh if you do want to if that is your niche okay uh they do have licensing for like the major the national type uh fraternity sororities so if you do want to get into that area all right uh you definitely want to research uh getting your license with the greek uh with the greek national uh, going that route all right so make sure you do that all right there are some there are some fraternities that they're not nationally recognized maybe you can work with the smaller okay or maybe you have a uh, friends or family right for a gift okay which would be a you know a onesie twosie all right uh but if you really want to go into that niche then definitely look into uh getting yourself a license so you could service uh all the national big fraternities and sororities all right all right so let's shift over to our drawing all right um all right i think we're good with lighting here all right so here i got a uh, sample stitch out this is on felt okay usually i like i like having a sample on felt because it, it it makes it it makes it look it gives it like a garment type feel all right so here we have sand stitches okay uh, we got our backside right and then our inner uh let's see let me see man we got good all right and this is our trace out okay everything begins with the trace all right your whole everything everything would applicate if you can trace an object you can applicate that project all right if you could as long as you could trace an item right so for example if you're trying to do applique with letters okay letters big block type letters easy to applique uh thin cursive letters might be a little bit more complicated but as you can see here okay we have a lot of space to work with okay uh we this is the outline of our letters here okay so really we start with the artwork okay we start with the artwork then we go with the trace all right trace to me is the number one everything is based off this trace here with this trace okay so i talked about the four items that we got to do right we got to do our cut we got to prepare our, our fabric we have to do our placement stitch tack down stitch and our and our sand stitch all right everything is based off this outline here with that outline i'm going to duplicate this four times so i could take care of those four items that i just talked about all right so let me see i got some markers right here um, all right so step number one okay step number one i would say is our cut uh this is this first one number one is to prep prep fabric okay what i mean there is use for cutting all right so i'm gonna make a stitch just a line all right and i'm going to stitch it on the fabric that i'm going to use uh the length of these uh running stitches it really doesn't matter let me see if you yeah you can get it right here all right but i'm gonna go with a uh, two millimeter two millimeter length all right usually the software it um let me zoom in a bit usually the software 
it starts it at a 2.5. All right. All right. Oh, yeah, we got a perfect view right here. You see? Yep. All right. So this here, number one, is our cut. Okay, so I'm going to place it on our fabric. This is the fabric that we want uh, to use as our applique. Okay, then I'm going to cut it. All right, then number two. Okay, number two, let me find. Number two is our placement stitch. Placement. This tells us where, where to lay our fabric, where to lay fabric. All right, it's just a guide. Okay guide um where to lay our fabric all right so uh so we put a uh the same stitch all right it'll the same thing it'll be a line all right so the same the same line that we use for our cut stitch we use it also for our placement stitch now here i don't really have to use a two millimeter i could just use the standard 2.5 millimeters all right, because this is just a guide telling me where to place. All right, so this is number one. Number two, I'm just kind of guiding you on which which uh, stitches we're going to use. And then let me find just a random color. All right, uh, let's use this one might work. All right, number three is our tack down. Tag down, stitch, and once, once we place our fabric, okay, according to our placement stitch, now we want to attach our our stitches, our fabric to our garment, okay. So I'm gonna make a drawing such like this, a square. All right. Now I know different people use different type of tag down stitch. I'm gonna show you that I use the square as a tack down because it grabs half on the fabric and then half on the garment, all right? And I'll show you on the software how I go about and the settings that I use. And really, so this is my tack down, all right? It looks a little choppy, but you'll see on the software, it looks a little bit more cleaner, okay? Uh, so this is attaching our fabric to our garment and it's also working as an underlay okay so it, it kind of has two purposes it, it, it attaches our fabric so it doesn't shift and then it, it's used as our um, as our uh, underlay and then finally okay number four is our final stitch fine All right is our ooh, this one's done Dying. This one is our final sand stitch, all right? Sand stitch. All right, bam. And when I'm in the software, I'll kind of show you alternatives because there's different ways to doing applique, okay? This is this is one step out of so many, okay? All right, um, bam, bam. All right, now, this number one here all right prepping your fabric as you can see here i have the outline this is this is kind of like hold on can you see all right this is kind of like a, a zoomed in view okay step number one when i'm preparing the fabric if you don't want to use it, if you don't want to cut it by hand, all right, you could export this file to your cutter. Okay, so even though I'm hand cutting it, you can export it, and instead of cutting it by hand, you could just use your cutter. So if you're doing like a hundred pieces, uh, it might not be uh, it might not be efficient to hand cut it. Okay, you could just send it to your cutter. All right, so when I'm talking about prepping fabric, cutting, all right, that's step number one. If you're not hand cutting it, that, that's the step where you're sending it to your cutter. All right, and you can, and then the software, I'll show you how I do it. Uh, the software can convert it into a vector file. 
or an SVG file, all right? So your cutter could read that file, all right? All right, and then, so there's number four, the sand stitch. That's when it finally seals everything, all right? It closes everything up for the final. All right, I'll just kind of show a little sample here. All right, so that's here, okay, on the on the paper. All right, now let's shift over. Let's shift over to uh, the software. Okay, let me see. Uh, all right, got it right here. And then let me know if you have any questions. All right, um, let's go here. So this is how it looks like. Okay, this is just my JPEG. All right, this is my JPEG. If uh, so, sometimes you might get a picture. Somebody might send you a picture, like, "Hey, can you can you uh, can you make this design?" Uh, right, and then if it's big, right? So something like this, twelve by four, twelve inches by four. If you were to try to stitch that out, that's a lot of stitches. Okay, we're talking about a lot of a lot of money, a lot a lot of time, a lot of materials. Okay, so that's when you start recommending applique. All right, but if you have the design, all right, of course you're gonna use that here. So let me put the grid. That, this is without the grid. Uh, so everything begins with everything begins with the the artwork. Okay, so with this artwork, uh, step number one is to outline our lines. Okay, because we want to make a clean, nice, uh, sharp outline with as minimum nodes possible, right? So I'll talk about all the nodes and everything. And then let me just uh, pull up my screen real quick. Let me just kind of make a quick announcement. All right, so for today's files, okay, I have um, I have the, the, the letters that we're using with, okay? And the files, the cut files, the the outline stitch and the sand stitches, all right? So for those who are uh, YouTube members, the Romero Threads YouTube members on our page, uh, these files are going to be available for download uh, starting tomorrow, okay? I'm just fine, I'm just doing the final tweaks, but everything that I'm working with, all the files that I have here, all right, you'll be able to download them if you are a member of, of our YouTube page, all right? It's $19.99 a month. And all the projects, class projects, anything that I have, right, that I've been working on, uh, I kind of just put it in that folder so you could download all that information, all right? So I do have the full alphabet um, in, so I have it in four different uh, in di four different formats. I have it as a JPEG. I have it as a vector, okay? So if you do want to send it out to a cutter, it's ready to go. Uh, I do have it as a line just a regular um uh perfect um running stitch outline and then i have it with uh with everything tag down sand stitch and everything to go with all right so make sure you become a member a lot of information a lot of pdfs i'm going to throw it on the all right so this one here is going to be a big one all right so highly recommend for that one all right now let's go back to let's go back to yep all right. Appreciate that, William. All right. We'll be a member. All right. I got my brother here. All right. Live from the 818 San Fernando Valley. All right. All right. All right. And then, Bevy Jean, question. Lots of people recommend using heat and bond light before cutting all materials to make materials differ. Yes. Yes. I'll, I'll talk about that too. I'll bring that up when I'm about to cut. All right, good stuff. All right. Uh, so any step that I do today, there's probably like 10 other ways to do it. All right. So I'm going to anytime I, I, I encounter a step, I'm going to try to think of uh, how different, different, um, different ways to do it. All right. And it all depends on the condition and the materials you have. All right. So let's go ahead. So we got our here and then here. So what I want to do once I trace it, once I trace my 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 artwork, right? It looks like this, all right. So this is when I'm tracing right now. I'll show you how I trace it. 
All right, when I'm tracing it, okay, I want it to make a perfect, just a run stitch all around, okay? And with these uh, running stitches, I can pretty much duplicate them, right? Duplicate them so I have four copies. And with those four copies, I can create, all right, I can create these stitches here. All right, so let's go ahead. So that's kind of like giving you a preview. All right, that's giving you a preview right here. So let's go ahead. Let me show you how I would go about. Um, all right, we dim it. Let's lock this down. Okay, to lock it down. All right, so everything starts with a closed shape running stitch. So make sure it's a running stitch here. Run, all right, uh, green. All right, so you want to get nice, clean trace here. All right, so what I like to do, all right, I'm going to show you kind of like a, a shortcut. Okay, I don't know if it's a shortcut, but this is how I get perfect, perfect, or close to perfect tracing. Okay, uh, first round. Okay, once I start tracing this, I don't get it. I don't get it perfect. So like this round curve here. Okay, I'm not going to try to get this round curve perfect right now. I'm going to come back in a bit, but right now I'm looking for that next straight line. Okay, find that straight line, click here. Not going to worry about this roundness, all right? I'm going to come back in a bit and take care of that roundness. I'm just taking care of my straights. This one here is a little bit rounded. Take care of that afterwards too. Anything that's rounded, I'm going to come back and I'm going to show you how I do it like in one shot with those roundness. Okay, so same thing here. It has a little slight round. Here, looking for the point where it goes straight. All right, get it straight here. Come to this corner. All right. Then get to this bottom. All right, I'm just looking for straight lines here. It curves, so I'm gonna look for where it goes straight again. These are all perfect corners here. All right, and then look for where it starts bending. Starts bending right here. Bam. All right, so I'm at the final one. I just push enter and it'll close up. All right, so I got this uh, trace right now. All right, so then I go back. I hit the H for my reshape. All right, I click here in the middle, put a little rounded, and then I just bring this in right here. All right, and then it just gives me a nice round shape. That way I don't have to click so many clicks to try to get this roundness perfect. All right, let's come back here, bam. And then go up here to this corner, same thing. All right, this just is helping keep it with the most minimum clicks as possible. All right, bam, click it here. This has like a little slight roundness here. All right, we wanna get it perfect on this first try because we're gonna duplicate these. Once we get it good uh, and we start duplicating, we don't wanna change this first one here. All right, and then we, bam, all right. All right, so let's do that again for the outside, all right. The only thing I'm gonna do, H, I'm just gonna put a start stop here. Yeah, here and towards the middle. Okay, let's do that again, but for the outside part. Okay, so again, digitize close shape. Okay, look for this shape here. All right, skip this rounded part. We'll come back to it. Okay, Get right here where it starts bending, bam. So right now we're just tracing, okay? This is the most, to me, this is the most important part right here, okay? Because we are basing our whole design off this first trace. So the cut stitch, placement stitch, tack down stitch, sand stitch, all revolves around this one here since we're gonna duplicate it, okay? And if you have good artwork, okay, makes life so much easier. All right, and 
just looking for where it curves. All right. And the good thing about this one, especially th these type of letters, once you do it the first time, okay, once you do it the first time, I mean, you have it accessible forever. All right. So perfect for like um, doing sports team and and logos. All right. Once you do it the first time. All right. Let's get that here. This little minor curve. Right. And then if you don't get something perfect, you can always go back and adjust your nodes. OK, so we're at the final. OK, close that up. H. And then we're just going to put our little bends here. OK, actually, this one has a sharp. It's straight here. So make this straight and then curve it at this point. Yep. Bam, right there. All right. And then you could tell if you have a good curve because you could just. Kind of visualize it. Just kind of go straight here and then a slight curve here. Bam. Then here, this curve. All right. And really, there's a million different ways to outline your designs. All right. That's just the way I do it. I've used a lot of, um, like, a lot of the techniques that I use in Illustrator. I kind of bring it and I use it also in uh, Wilcom digitizing part. So kind of acts the same, the, the software. That's why I think I like Wilcom a lot because it has a lot of the same features. All right, so I'll put my back my back one in the back, cut, make that black, and then the front, make it blue. Okay, and then we'll move that, all right. So now I have, all right, I got a, let me see. All right, so you can look at it. Looks pretty symmetric. Okay, looks pretty good. All right, let me just verify this one because I don't know. I don't know if this should be sharp here. Okay, so, so here I didn't put the curve. So, actually, let me see if I'm answering this question with this, uh, Bevy Jean. So, are you adding extra nodes to give you the extra curve? So. What I'm doing, yes. So here, this is a uh, perfect example of this one. Okay, so here I have to add this curve. I haven't added it yet. So here, I, I know my curve occurs right between these two straight lines. Uh, so I'm gonna put a bend right now. Okay, so you're gonna see how I do that. All right, all right. Good morning, Lejean. All right. Um, so here, I select a. Uh, my black line, H, okay, and then I right down the middle, curve it, put a circle here, and then just bring it in, bam, right there. All right, so now it matches. All right. Then you just want to double check. Like here, I had a, I, I missed one right here too. It's just one thing. If you ever, if you do uh, design with the mentality of going back, you just got to make sure you don't forget one of these 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 were little detail ones so that's why i almost forgot them right there bam bam right you're just kind of looking at the corners all right everything looks good now all right so you want to do that for all the letters all right so really it's two um it's two traces per letter here right the front side and the back side all right, so once you trace it, right, it looks like this, okay? So this is the same copy, okay? This is actually the one that I use uh, for uh, for the sample that I have here. Now, let's say you want to take this to a cutter, okay? Okay. Usually software, all the software or the majority, I don't want to say all of them because I never used all of them, but I'm pretty sure the majority of them Okay, has that um, feature, right? I just use it as export design as vector. Okay, so you could take it, uh, you could take it into uh, your vector program and set it up like that. Okay, 
I know in Hatch they had it very easy to put it as SVG as one of your here. So if you have, uh, I think each each one is is different. But usually I send it as I save it as an EPS, and then I'll just uh, open it up in Illustrator to set it up. All right. All right. Now once we have our line here, okay. With as long as we have our lines, we're pretty much ready ready to do our four stages of applique. Okay, so let me see what I got right here. So the first one, okay, so I'm going to I'm going to actually do a, uh, a demonstration, I'll do one letter. Okay, let me see, I'll do one letter. Um, pi, this one here, pi. Okay, how many is that? So as you can see, uh, 7,000 700 stitches all right so for the full the full one here we're looking at almost 22,000 stitches all right so it'll probably take a, a minute so usually okay i remember when when i was active fraternity and i would order my shirts definitely hold on let me bring up my screen right here uh definitely if you were ordering full sand stitches all right uh way more it, it costs a lot more all right you were definitely paying extra okay um and this is why because your stitch count goes up now i know if you want to bring that price down okay if you want the the time speed to go or the time to embroider to be a little quicker then instead of a sand stitch you're gonna have to go with a zigzag stitch all right so this kind of this kind of show different types of scenarios that we can do so if if you are going that route let's say um you're going the zigzag route okay you would if you're going a zigzag route actually i'm gonna save the zigzag for for after we do the sand stitch okay because that way i could bring uh, i could talk about the different scenarios and then talk about plan b when we go zigzag style so anytime you hear zigzag on an applique it just means less stitches, a lot more less stitches, all right? But let's talk about converting these, all right? So I'm going to start on the back side of our application. So I'm going to hide this here, hide, oh, hide these, all right? So we just have, and what this is, all right? So looking at our picture here, let me just show you what I'm working on right now. That's equivalent right now, what I'm about to Digitize, that's equivalent to the red portion, right? The back side of our file. All right, just to kind of give you perspective of what we're working on right now. All right. All right, let me see. All right, so we want to duplicate. Um, Duplicate. Uh, let's change this color. Every time I duplicate, I change the color. So let's make this brown. Duplicate. All right. So let's talk about this first one. Uh, this one will be our placement stitch. This will tell us where to place our stitches. All right. So this one, we're not really doing anything to it. Okay. So here, uh, my stitch values. You can see where I'm at a length 2.5, okay, standard length value for a running stitch. All right, so this kind of tells you where to place your fabric. All right, so then I go to the second one, this one here, which is color blue. Uh, here, I want to make a tag down stitch. Actually, not this. This one's, um, I hid this one, so let's go on the brown one. Okay, so here I want to make my tack down stitches. I know a lot of times uh, a lot of people use the, the zigzag, open it up as a um, with three millimeters, uh, fills, or outlines, spacing, two millimeters. All right, you could go more for, all right, underlay. I always take out, I, I would take out my underlay right now. Tag down. Um, 
So usually I know the, the zigzag is very popular for, but what I like to do, all right, instead of using this one, okay, use the uh, square, all right, square one here. All right, so I don't know, for some reason, I like it because it serves two purpose. It's good for uh, underlay and for a tack down. So that's why I like this one. Because as you can kind of see, it, it kind of looks like a um, a outer edge type tag down, right? So let me see. Um, on my length, two millimeters. Uh, instead of 1.6, let's space this out to four, right? That's just giving some elbow room right there, all right? So this is how it would tack it down, all right? So it makes it pretty clean, gives it a clean look here, all right? So that would be our tack down stitch. So after we place our fabric, okay, then we can kind of tell it where to start, H. Starting here on the side. All right, tack down. This is gonna hold down our fabric and then our final one, which is kind of purple here, is our sand stitch. And I like I like my, my number one go-to size, four millimeters. Okay, nice and bold. So the one, the sample that I have here, that was four millimeters. Okay. Underlay, since we already have that, we already have that edge run type underlay. I'm just going to put a, a a zigzag, all right, as an extra one, just to give it nice boldness, all right? And then, all right, bam. So this will be the backside of it, all right? And then, let's unhide all, unhide all. And let me select pie. Uh, hide others. All right, let's, and then we would do the same thing on the inside one, all right? Same, same everything, all right? Uh, so, uh, let me see, placement. Yeah, first one's placement. Oh, so we, we're, so now we gotta duplicate it two times again, duplicate. Well, let me select, yeah. So, oops, let me grab that single stitch, duplicate, one, two, change the color. So let's change this to a red, let's change this to a black. All right, so we're gonna use the same features. And really, you wouldn't do this one by one, you would do this all in one shot, square, and spacing four millimeters and these settings all right it's not like these are the settings you have to use right you're gonna find like your sweet spot like uh settings that you like everybody has different types of settings there's no such thing as this is the correct settings to be at all right and then uh, four millimeters all right and give it that nice boldness underlay we're just gonna put a zigzag. All right, so this is exactly what I did on this one. Now, now let's go here. This is the final one, all right? So after we did all those steps together, all right, what I wanna show you is something like right here, all right? So here, you can see like my corner, right? It's it's a little different here, all right? So if your software has this where it kind of, you can adjust the corners, all right? Here I have that. Um, on this one, I made it a, is it, it's a tad bit different, all right? But what I want to show you, let me select this one. Uh, bam, right here. Effects and corners, okay? If If your software has this, then it's pretty good because sometimes you you get some uh, weird corners that look kind of weird. 
All right? So let's say if I were to remove lap corners, all right? The corners look like this, all right? No big deal, all right? But if you kind of want to, sometimes you'll have corners that are too long, look like a big shank, okay? For example, like this one starts looking like a shank. You can measure this. Let's put our dots, M. We were to measure this stitch right here on this corner. All right, 6.7. That's pretty safe. It's not It's not a big, big deal. Sometimes you'll get a stitch that goes too far. All right, it'll be like 9, 10 inches. All right, this, that's where you're going to have to kind of uh, play with your uh, stitch corners. All right, so here, I just kind of went, I'm using a um, cap corner. Which one am I using? Here, yeah, lap corner here. Okay, this one here is what it's called a lap corner. Okay, it just kind of laps the corners over. All right, so it gives it like a pretty nice clean look. You just have to kind of control it because sometimes this sand stitch kind of goes far too much. All right, so you got to kind of control lap corners. All right, but very useful. You could also use cap corners or lap corners. All right, this one here on the Omega, let's see, I have uh, lap corners. I don't have the full overlap. So on this one, I had the full overlap. Let me see. Yeah, full overlap. So it overlaps completely. Then here, I just have it uh, lap below 74. All right, so it just kind of gives it different options. So let's say, let's see if I take this off here, right? Kind of looks a little weird. All right. All right. So that's just if you kind of want to uh, give your corners kind of like a certain look. All right. And if you don't have that feature, then you're just manually, you're just manually digitizing how these corners look like. All right. All right. Cool. Cool. Uh, let me see. So that was that. And now. So I put our placement stitch, our tack down stitch, and our sand stitch, all right? One thing that I haven't talked about was our cut stitch. So what I do, I copy our placement stitch. So let's say for pi. Um, I, I copy and paste the outer stitch, okay? So this is me showing you how I'm going to cut it right now, how I'm going to cut my fabric. Okay, I get the outer piece. So this piece here, I just copied my placement stitch and I put it on its own, on its own uh, file. So I'm gonna save it. I save it as pi outer cut, okay. So I'm gonna put the fabric that I'm gonna use for the outer part. And then I do the same thing for the inner side. Okay, so I have two different files. Uh, since I'm using two different fabrics. If you're gonna if you're gonna do multiple runs, then you would just kind of copy and paste all the letters that you're gonna do on the back and then all the letters that you're gonna do on the front. All right. So you're gonna, these are the files that I use. And the only thing that I change with the difference of um, my um, placement stitch and my cut stitch is here on the length, I've changed it to two millimeters. All right, so it's a little tighter just to kind of make it a little easier to cut. All right. All right, so let's do a quick replay of how everything's gonna play out. And then we, um, actually, let me show you this one here. All right, well, let me show you the one I did here as a sample. All right, let me replay this. So it stops after every cut. Okay, that's where I have it. So here puts the placement stitch. So it's gonna put three placement stitch. All right, so put me three placement stitch. Uh, now I know where to place my, my fabric, all right? So once I got that, now this is my cue to put on my fabric, okay? Once my fabric is put on, now my tack down stitch goes down. And I actually have my tack down stitch and then right after it, it goes right into the sand stitch, All right? So tack down stitch, it's gonna tack it down. It does that zigzag underlay, and now it's doing that. Now it's doing the, the sand stitch, all right?
So it does that all the way through. Okay. And since I have real good tag down on it, it shouldn't shift or anything. All right. Then it does the same thing. It's going to tack it down here. And this one here is the back, the back part of the file of the fabric. Okay. Speed it up a bit. Bam. Okay. And then it goes to the next one. All right. So now I've done the back side of it. Now I'm doing the front side. Okay. So now same thing. I'm just going to give me my placement. Okay. Now I know where to place my fabric. Okay. Once I got my placement, put on my fabric, and now it's going to do the same thing. It's going to do the tag down, add it here, do it again. Then, bam. And there are. There are uh, there are settings where you could just get your cut line, your 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 running stitch, push applique, and everything does it automatic. I just for some reason I just do everything manually. All right, I want to control as much as I can. Right, but I know there are features where you just you select the the running stitch, push applique, and everything is done automatic. All right, uh, there's all I'm telling you. There's so many different ways to do it. All right. Um, all right thank you william all right new member or youtube member all right just a reminder uh the files okay the files the the jpeg the vector files and the stitch files they're going to be available for download if you are a youtube member all right so a channel member all right 1999 a month all right i'm going to drop all of uh our downloads class downloads and other stuff into uh, those files right there. All right. Thank you very much. All right. And then we got a question. Uh, good morning. How can you see functions? For example, stop trims without opening the player and will come. Without opening the player. Uh, I'm, let me see if I understand your question. All right. Uh, if you want to see our um, uh, cuts. So, it's so, so once I take it out of true view, uh, these triangles. So if you look at it here, these triangles are telling you where where the cuts are are at, and these circles is where it starts the stitch. All right. So, and then if you don't have that function on up here, there should be a uh, a button, right? Show connectors. All right, and then show functions also. All right. So it's just a setting right there. All right. Cool, cool. Let me know if that was kind of the question that you had. All right, so let's go ahead. Let's stitch out. Let me show you the complete process. All right, I'm going to do the letter pi. Let me see. All right, we're doing good with time. All right, and then really it's uh, depending on what, what um, depending what garment you're using, okay, uh, really the, the process is all the same. Okay, it's all the same. All right, whether you're doing jackets, sweaters, backpacks, okay, a lot of this process is all the same even hats all right all right uh let me see let's transition let me get the gopro ready to go all right and then if there's a if there's a different way that you kind of do it, all right, you could kind of uh, bring it up in the chat too, all right? Because this is definitely not the only way to do it. I would say this way, once we're hand cutting, this is more like we got a couple to do, all right? But I'm telling you, once you do a big group, 100, um, 100 sweaters, all right, you're definitely going, um, you're definitely using a different route. All right, let me see if this GoPro's up. All right, bam, got it good right here. All right. Let me just adjust this. All right, so materials, right? The good thing about applique materials is so basic, All right? Materials so basic. So I got my felt. Okay, I got this felt right here. I'm gonna 
I'm going to uh, say this is kind of like my garment, all right? Garment, twill, okay, twill. Really for applique, twill is like the most popular thing you could use, right? The most popular fabric you could use is twill. I like it because it's strong, uh, pretty sturdy, uh, takes a beating, all right? So good when laundered, all right? So for sports team, especially for fraternity, sorority, all right? But if you do want fabric, you could use fabric, all right? Let me see if I had a piece of fabric. Right, you could use fabric. One thing about fabric that I would recommend, okay, and kind of Bevy Jean kind of brought it up a, a little earlier. All right, uh, this is when I would I would recommend using uh, heat and bond. Okay, so any adhesive to kind of give it uh, give it some structure. All right, make it a little bit more dense, and that way you could put the sticky back on the back. All right, just makes it a little bit more. Uh, it makes it last a whole lot longer. All right. So if you are going, right, so a lot of times uh, fabric is requested or somebody might bring you a fabric that they want to use. OK, so we can use the same steps that we're using right now. All right. The only thing I would recommend is adding some uh, heat and bond okay, or equivalent. So if you're going like every uh, embroidery supplier, all stitch canold, they have its own version of heat and bond. Right. So if you want the more commercial type, they have it also. All right. So let me see. Let's go ahead. I'm going to use this hoop. All right. I could use a um, five by five to make one letter, but just to kind of give myself some space. All right. Um, so what I want to do, let me do my first letter. All right, let's put this away here. I have some tear away. Right now I'm going to I'm going to make my my file so I can so I can cut my fabric. Actually, let me see this little scrap piece might work here. Yeah, this works. Oh, it's perfect right there. Kind of barely grab. Yeah, this tear away. So, this is, I'm just using this for my cut file. I might have to cut. Yeah, it don't matter right now. All right. So, what letters first? Red. Okay. So, red. All right. Need, let's see. One. One, two, three, four. So I'll cut it at five inches. Let me grab my cutters. Turn this on. You see? So I got these cutters here. Uh, when it comes time for cutting fabric and twill and all that, these here are so convenient. So one, two, three, four, five. Let's cut it down. Let's go about here. All right, it's kind of bigger than what I need. All right, good thing about this, okay, uh, this one already has its sticky back, so I don't have to hoop it with the Mighty Hoop. I could, I'm just going to stick it on this one here. All right. So, actually... Let me um, download the file. All right, give me one sec. All right, let me see if there's any questions. Uh, and then, uh, Crystal, thank you. Is there a way to see the functions in the object list so you can see the sequence? Um. The object list, as in if there's a cut, I don't think so. I don't think so. That would be kind of convenient if it tells you there's a cut right there, right after. 
but no, not that I know of. And then Bevy Jean. So if you would do these letters on a sweater, would you put knockdown? No, no, I, no, no, no. You don't, you don't need a knockdown stitch because the applique is going to go right over, right over it. So you definitely do not need a, um, then where do you purchase your twill? All right. Uh, so to purchase twill, uh, twill USA, okay. Twill USA has, um, stalls. Right. There, there's different vendors. Sometimes certain locations they sell out. So you gotta um so vendor wise, just to buy stuff. I'm usually checking different sites just because sometimes they're sold out somewhere. All right. Um and then this is a good question. I'm just saving the file onto my um USB. And then Bevy Jean, so you're using tearaway instead of cutaway, even though it would be our cloak. Uh, reason why reason why I'm using tearaway right now. This is just my, this is I'm just using this this stitch right here to cut my twill. So this is not going onto the actual garment. Uh, export machine file. Actually, hold on. I gotta export my uh, outer. Or oh, I think I already did. Give me one second. I'm just saving it onto my thumb drive. So I got my inner cut, my outer cut, and my actual stitch. All right. So it's so it's three it's three files because you need your outer, the cut for the outer, inner, and then the actual file. All right. All right. Let's switch over. All right, let's go. Let's take it to the machine. All right. See, all right, we got a good view right here. Get some space right here. All right, so let me just load. So red, that's gonna be my outside uh, file. Enter. So I'm loading three files. So the the two cut files, and then my um, my outer cut, my inner cut, and then the actual file for the stitching. Uh, okay. All right. So pi outer. Who? So hoop letter E. All right. So if I was doing the full three letters, I would cut this fabric with three letters right now, right? But I'm just doing one letter. Um, All right, uh, I'm just gonna go letter color white so we can see it, one, two. All right, so I got my fabric here, all right? And right now it's convenient because this twill has the, has the temporary seal on it, okay? So I'm just kind of safe right here. I'm not going to completely flatten it out because I want to make sure it fits here. Yeah, we're good. It's actually a bigger size than I thought. All right. So here, I'm just creating my cut files. All right, since I'm not going the cutter route, this is how I cut my, my files. All right, and then start.
All right, so I got my cut file for this one here. All right, let's take it back here. All right, take this off. And since this sample, the sample that I'm showing you right now, I'm just doing one letter right now. All right, but in reality, if you were to be doing a big project, you would have you would have cut all of. You would have been cutting the whole color. So if you're using a color red, we would have done that whole uh, lineup all in one shot. All right, but we're only doing one letter. Okay, so let me add some light right here. Let me see, I wanna show you when I'm cutting it. All right, so all I'm gonna do now is just cut it with the line. All right, let me see if I get you a good view. All right. I'm just gonna cut it real quick. All right. All right, you just wanna be close. Let me just give myself some space right here. So I use I use the these gingers for like the longer cuts and then for the detailed all right, like once I start curving in here, then I might want to use this little smaller detailed ones. All right, but for right now, all right. And usually after I cut the first one and you get like in a rhythm, then you start cutting these pretty quick. All right, now I know I used to cut in the hoop, Right, cutting in the hoop, uh, I think takes a whole lot longer, and it doesn't come out as clean. Potentially, it doesn't come out as clean as actually cutting them off the hoop. So, if you're gonna manually cut fabric, there's two ways to manually cut fabric. There's when you put it in the hoop, when you just kind of cutting it while it's already attached. Or there's this way. All right, so. All right, usually this way, it's kind of less, less uh, possibilities of error. And you don't really leave a lot of big chunks as you would if you're cutting inside the hoop. And if you're using a cutter, definitely you're skipping this, this step here, all right? So here's where I kind of used my gingers for these little detail parts. Let me see, I know the angle is kind of Fix this light, Ryan. All right. All right, give me one sec. This is the thing with applique. This is the time consuming part is prepping your um, your fabric. All right, because everything else, right? Once, once you have it hooped up and you push start, I mean, you're pretty much good to go. You could work on other stuff, but this is really what is the time consuming. And I know there are some, there's some shops that have, um, I remember when I used to look at the lady that used to make my sweaters back in the days, my fraternity sweaters, they used to have a, um, like a stencil that they used. 
and they would just mark it with a uh, with a marker and then cut it out. Cool. All right, that one looks good. It's really just that inside part that was kind of time consuming. Usually the outsides. All right. And I think hand cutting uh, moves a whole lot faster if you're using just like regular type shapes. Like squares, circles. Right here, you could kind of little details here that would be cut. Good thing about these scissors, they cut like to the tip, to the very tip. So you can get these last little. And then the the file, I like working with four millimeters because if you don't have it like perfect, perfectly cut, that four millimeter it'll cover it. All right. All right. So overall. All right, so overall good. All right. Cut a little close to a string here, but that's cool. All right, now let's go ahead. Toss this out. Now let's do the inside cut. Okay. Let's do the inside cut. Actually, for the inside cut, let me use the smaller hoop. It should fit on this hoop right here. That way I'm not using all right, so got that one. All right, let's go back on the machine. All right, now let's get out of this one. Let's open, enter, enter, okay. It should fit right now. All right, so I'm gonna cut my, where's my white fabric? Oh, fell on the floor. All right, I'm just going to cut a little piece of the white twill. All right, let's see. Probably uh, one, two, three, four. Four inches, kind of safe. All right. Let me see if that's... Good enough, should be good. Oh, it's actually bigger than I thought. All right, it's gonna be actually pretty close. Hold on. Just to be safe, now I'll strike out right here, make it a tad bit bigger. All right, just to be on the safe side, all right. I'm just gonna peel this off here. And then bar, thank goodness for my cutter. Yup. 
So if you got a cutter, right, you're doing all this, right? You, you're, you would just set up your, uh, you would just send that uh, cut file, send it as a vector to your cutter. Okay. Uh, just make sure you understand how to use your cutter. Don't start a big project without having uh, experience using your cutter. Okay, because sometimes cutters want to act up too. Okay, all right. This kind of sticky one is its not too sticky, but it's all good. It's just cutting it. All right. Oh. Ah. All right. All right. So what I did, little rookie mistake. Did a little rookie mistake. I didn't select the, the the color, and it just it automatically goes to uh, needle one, and needle one, I don't have it threaded. All right, let's try that again. We might have the little holes right here. Let's back up. All right, now let's select the color four. I'll select four so we could see the color. All right. All right, hold on. Let me put this. All right, let's try that again. All right, let's cut this. Now, if let's say let's say if um, you're doing fabric, okay. Let's say I was using this fabric right here. All right, what you would want to do at this point, I that's when I would put the heat in bond right now. Okay, I would put the heat in bond to protect it. All right. All right, let's go. Let's cut this real quick. Let me see. So we have our guide right here. All right. And really, once you get in a groove, you're cutting this pretty quick. All right. I know I'm kind of showing it like slow. I'm trying to cut it so you can see it, though. All right, let me see. Let's try this again. All right, I think we're good right here. All right. Let's see if I could cut this in in one minute. These straight lines, these are the ones that go pretty quick, especially with these bigger scissors. And with these gingers, it's cutting it like easy. All right. Here. All right. Now, now this is where my fabric. You prepare your fabric. Okay. However, you prepare it. So there's different ways to prepare it. There's this way, which is the more labor intense cutter okay cutter less labor intense and then uh laser also there's lasers all right and then from here so the next step that we're going to do we're going to hoop this is where you would hoop your garment now that's where you would want to use your cutaway Okay, here I'm just using tearaway because uh, I'm just prepping, I'm just cutting my fabric. Now you could you could add a cutaway right now, and it would um, 
it would give a little strength to your uh, fabric, right? Because it's kind of attached to it. This. Pull out the little scissors for the little details. All right, there are there are some people that do applique all day, and they cut a whole lot faster than what I cut. All right, but that's pretty good right here. All right, so I got my fabric ready. See, all right, so now let's go ahead. Get you set up. All right, let's throw away all this scrap. A lot of scrap, right? With applique. I think when I started, when I first started embroidery, this was the route that I was thinking about going. Okay, but then we really went heavy on the hats, polos, beanies. All right, but this one is always a fun one because applique, the good thing about applique, it makes your it makes your garment really pop out. All right, so all right, so I'm gonna have this here. Let's use so I'm going to use felt. Okay, to kind of mimic my uh, garment. Okay, so if you're having, if you're using a sweater, all right, this is where you want to make sure your sweater is nice and lined up. You're using the correct hoop. So if you are gonna go the sweater route, I would recommend. All right, let's see if you can see this. I would, I would recommend this hoop. Okay, this hoop, very sweater friendly. All right, especially for this type of work where we have uh, three, three letters, okay, three Greek letters. Definitely, definitely one of the best ones to use. Okay, so let me see right now. All right. Pretty much this is my last, this is the last piece of this fabric. So I'm not even gonna cut this just so I could save the that last little piece. Okay, let me get this nice little corner here. Let's get this right here. Okay, and okay, wanna make sure nice and clean here. Clean. All right, now since I don't have any any sticky backiness to this, all right, let me add. You do have the option of adding a heat and bond there, but what I'm going to do, I'm just going to do the old fashioned. We're going to put some spray. So I'm going to have my little piece of cardboard here that I use for spraying. Okay. Got my pieces here. Make sure you shake it good. Okay. Put a good amount. All right. I have my fabric ready to go. I got my hoops ready to go. Let's take it to the machine. All right. Now it's the fun part. Now it's the part where we just push start. Right, and we're ready to go. All right. Um, uh, other, other, uh, other ideas that you can use also to make if you don't want to cut, you could send out your your designs to get cut to a third party. So I know there's uh, stalls, right? You could you could send it out to get it cut, and then they'll just send it back. They'll send you the actual fabric already cut. So you can save a lot of time. Okay, I'm just showing you kind of like worst case scenario. If you're gonna hand cut it, okay, I would recommend hand cutting it like that because you're getting, you're actually getting it real close, all right? Instead of 
cutting it in the hoop. All right, let me take out this this design. Let me put the pie. Okay. All right, let's put on our hoop right here. All right. All right, so let me put my stitches, my color. Forgot to do it on the first round. So the first one is the red. So let's go with four, four, and then white, white, two, two. All right, so it's gonna do the placement stitch first. So let's go. Four, oh, put the wrong color. Um, it's all right. Actually, let me switch it back to this, to the correct color. I put a needle four, but it's really supposed to be needle five. So take that out. All right, just backtrack. All right, change the color. It's supposed to be five, five, two, two. All right. Let's do that again, take two. And then I push the little red thing to come. There we go. All right. Hey, good morning. Crafty Puerto Rican, do you order the tool from stalls online? Yeah, you could order it online. And then, Sherry, do you need to convert to vector file? No, you don't have to. Um, but if you send it to your cutter, okay, uh, it has to be um, SVG or whatever file that your cutter uses, but usually it's Kind of like a, a vector. All right, so here, let me see. Let me show you here. I'm gonna put this fabric. All right, you could do this on on the machine. Okay, you could do this on the machine, but I kind of take it out just to have this sturdiness of the table. All right, and then you could put a color that'll contrast so you could see it. All right, you can't really see it on the I'm pretty sure you can't see it because I can barely see my um, placement stitch. All right. So it has the spray. The spray is very strong. This is that four, 505 spray. Okay. So it's pretty strong. Should hold it down. All right. As long as I don't see any of my um, placement stitch, should be all right. All right. So let's take it back. Okay, so what it's gonna do first, let's see if I can get you a good angle here. What it's gonna do first, it's gonna do that tag down stitch and then it'll go right into the sand stitch. All right, let's see. And what I have, my little thing, I got my little chopsticks here, right? Just in case that first, that first one wants to uh, pull that fabric up, right? But usually the, the tape holds it pretty strong. So this first one, this is that uh, square knockdown stitch. I mean, that square tag down stitch. 
All right. So here I'm just making sure that it's, it's grabbing the fabric pretty good. And it looks like it's getting it very good right now. See, yeah, I think you got a good good view right there. And then um, bar fabric glue works well for keeping letters in place. All right, that's maybe something that I might want to check out. I've never used a fabric glue, so I might have to check that out. All right, I stopped it for a bit just because I noticed with that um, cut line, I have this white piece of, and I don't wanna hassle with it later. It was just part of the cut stitch that kind of sticking out. All right, now he's doing that zigzag underlay. All right, so here you could kind of you could kind of see that the tack down and the underlay is grabbing pretty good. What you don't want is that fabric to kind of be creeping outside. So usually you can tell once you see that first tack down. So it looks good right now. And then Jernas, have you ever thought about doing this class in Spanish? Uh, that'd be a pretty good idea. All right. It'll, it'll probably sound real choppy, okay? but I'll probably be going back and forth Spanish and English if I did try to do it in Spanish. But maybe, maybe something I might do in the future. And then Bevy Jean, I, I use Elmer School Glue to hold fabric. Perfect. All right. My daughter has that one, the school glue, the purple one too. I don't know, might have to experiment with that. Uh, usually with the spray, I, I mean, the spray has never let me down. So that's why I never, I've never gone out of the spray. I've always used the spray. All right, now, uh, and then uh, CC in Spanish. Yeah, I'm gonna have to check that out. I think, not, I think it does show me that it, it does do CC in Spanish. I'm like, the translation might be all weird though. It could work though. Uh, what was I gonna say? Um, okay, so this type, this is a double double applique. All right, uh, I, I would say it's not very common. I, I remember uh, when I used to do my fraternity letters, I would I would definitely pay extra money for double applique and double uh, double stacked and sand stitch. Okay. So we would we would pay good money. I remember I used to pay good money for uh, double applique sand stitch. So this is something once you go this route, okay, you are paying extra. Okay. Uh, now let's say if you want to save time. You don't want to be so this one here just for this letter alone we're looking at almost uh seven and a half thousand seven point four okay seven thousand four hundred stitches okay uh if you want to cut down on the stitches then you would you would change over to a uh sand stitch i mean not a sand stitch a zigzag stitch all right, now what I would recommend if you do go zigzag stitch, if you're trying to use less stitches, uh, definitely use a cutter. 
okay? Because if you don't have perfect cuts, you can see through the stitches, all right? So you definitely want to have a cutter. You want... And really, whatever route you go with, you're always going to find ways to make it better. So this is like a starting point if you're, if you're doing... Um, if you're doing applique, the, the way that we're doing it right now, okay, very, it's, it's like the first level that you would use, all right? So you can always upgrade uh, by using a cutter, all right? Let's see where we're at. So let me just point out some stuff out. We have a, a little white, you can see like a white thread right here. This is from the cut stitch. Uh, I use white just so we can just so we can see it on the screen uh, so it could kind of stand out. But in reality, you might want to use a cut stitch that's similar to your, um, similar to the thread that you're using. So something close to red. Or making sure that any loose threads, we, we cut it because this, this, we can always go back and cut that piece, but you can kind of see it here. And in here, I kind of have the, the stitch showing too. All right, so what I'm gonna do now I already I, I put the I put the spray on the second layer. Okay. Really I should have waited till I actually put it on, but it's still there. It's still gonna stick. All right, so what I'm gonna do now. Okay, transition to the table. All right, take this guy off. And you could do this on on the station. All right, but I like to uh, push it down against the table. That's why I take it off. Oh, actually, hold on. Let me put it back. I gotta put down that that placement stitch. Let me put it back on. All right, let's go back on the. All right, what's gonna do now is a uh, placement stitch. So now we go to two. So exactly like how we digitized it, all right? So exactly like how we put our corners, our roundness, that, that's what our placement stitch is. All right, so now we got our placement. All right. So I can definitely see my white lines here. Okay, now I just put this guy over. This is where you kind of want to be very, very careful that you're completely covered. And really applique, I would put applique as uh, fine detailing. Okay, uh, I think not anybody can just right out the bat be real good at applique. I think it takes a lot, a lot of practice, right? Especially getting your sand stitches. And, you know, like in the beginning, you're not cutting close enough. Your stitches stand out. 
uh, little like minor details that if you don't get it right, it really, it really affects the project. So I think if you do want to go that route, just kind of do as much practice as possible. Because once you got it right, you're not only doing like Greek letters, you're doing like sports and big, big projects. Okay. So very, very profitable. Okay, very profitable because you're doing big designs now. But it's it's very detailed work just because one little thing that's off and it's very noticeable. All right, all right, let me see. All right. So now we got it all lined up. Good to go. All right, so here I put a blue cut stitch, all right? Uh, the smart thing would have been to put like a lighter color, all right? But it's still going to cover it up. should still cover it up. I don't see any uh, long blue threads to kind of stand out, all right? So this color combination, I, I really think it stands out like black garment with a red undertone and a white inside. All right, I think this color really stands out. Uh, that's another thing. Um, to make designs really pop out, okay, if if you really study the color color combinations color theory all right you could you could make items that look normal you can really make them stand out a whole lot more so sometimes somebody might might ask for recommendations like hey what color do you recommend if you know the colors the contrast colors and colors that kind of uh go together all right you'll make an ordinary project really stand out. And I would recommend if you do go this route, uh, just have different samples, like different color combination samples so people could see it for themselves. All right, so right now it's running that zigzag underlay. Okay, so. Uh, and then from right here, it's going to run through. Yeah, so now sand stitches is really the, the time-consuming part on the machine. I think nowadays, um, Greek letter, the pricing, because there's so much competition with Greek letter pricing. I know it's gone down a bit. It's gone down a lot, a lot. Um, I think a lot of times when you see pricing on Greek letter, a lot of times they're pricing on the zigzag. So sometimes don't be too intimidated. Like if you see somebody's pricing so cheap, uh, usually on the fine detail, it'll tell you this is for zigzag. Okay. Let me see if I can get into the software real quick. Let me show you something. Oh, uh, actually. Mm, it would remove the video. All right. After it's finished, I'm going to show you something real quick on the software. Good morning, Rhonda. All right. Do you go into detail on how to charge for this in your pricing video? Uh, so on the pricing video, I don't go specific on a specific type of job. Um, really, it's just based off time, materials. Uh, so here, right, if you have a cutter, um, if you have everything already prepped, like you have all your letters ready to go, then it takes you quicker. But if you're starting from scratch, like you haven't even done a Greek letter project yet, uh, it might take you more time to start from scratch. So the length the, the the amount of time it takes you uh two things 
if you have if you have the letters prepared and if you have a um and what's your method of cutting really what the pricing is so usually uh you'll see you'll see some shops they charge real cheap and you wonder how do they charge so cheap for their uh greek letter applique and most likely that's what they do they do a lot of that they do a lot of applique and they have cutters so they're just cutting uh so time wise they save a lot of time on the cutting and their files are ready to go so you would just have to kind of ask yourself how long does it take for you to finish a project to see how much you would charge all right so it's gonna i'm just gonna check make sure everything's getting covered usually with four millimeters you're kind of you're pretty safe with four millimeter sand stitches. Once you drop down to 3.5, uh, definitely if you're down to two millimeter sand stitches, all right, that's kind of cutting it very close. You gotta have to have perfect, perfect cutting and placement has to be perfect. All right, once it's off, I'm going to put it here on the bright lights on my uh, photo, the photo box so we can get a good view. So far, it looks clean. All right, just got to make the top and half of the side. Um, good to go. All right, baby jeans. Well, I'm mostly done in the hoop cutting. Yeah, in the hoop cutting, it's. That's the, it, it makes the cutting even more difficult, okay? It adds more time and just by doing it like this, yeah, it, it, it has saved me a lot of time too. Then uh, the square stitch, yeah, the, the tack down as a square stitch. I like that one too. Holds it pretty clean. All right, so it's about to finish right now. All right, let's take it to the photo box here. Let's see, my battery hasn't died here. Okay, still good. All right, let's shift over. Oops, camera two. Yep. All right. I'm just going to blow some air on it just because it's a bit dusty. All right, let's check this out. Hold on, let me... Let me just save this piece of cutaway. Put this right here. Just cut it real close. Yeah. Save that. Hold on. We get a nice cut right here. Just put this in the sample box. I got a good sample box here. Then. Anytime I, I kind of use certain colors, kind of use them. Hello, half. 
That's right here. Alright, so, uh, so far, cutting it, let me see, I'm kind of taking a quite a quick glance. Alright, so I got this little, this was from the cut stitch, so I could, I, I'm going to have to cut this one out. Alright, I don't have any, um. Loose loops. All right, so you always check for the loose loops. All right, and then one last clean. You just do one. Because usually with twill, it's like, and it was coated, so we got some little dust. So grab the tape. Just kind of, I got the tape right here, just kind of. All right, bam, let's take a look at it. All right, hold on, let me fix this uh, zoom. No, let me fix the focus auto. All right, check it out. Let me know what you think. Looks pretty clean. All right. Right. So it has good dimensions to it, right? Because we have that double stack. Really gives it that extra umph. All right. All right. So let me know what you think. All right. Um, All right, all right. So that there, right? Double stacked. Double stacked. I like that. There's a lot of there's a lot of different fonts, uh, different lot of um, different type of Greek letters. Okay, the ones I have here. I got my samples. The one I have here, I like it because it's it's not the thin type. So I know I've done a lot where there's like the thinner type, but these here. Right, they're a little thicker. It just stands out a whole lot more. So this, this, this is the one we just did, right? All right, so once again, okay, for those who are uh, channel members on the YouTube, I'm gonna have this Available for download today, Saturday. So by tomorrow morning, I'm just working out the last little details. Okay, by tomorrow morning, uh, available for download is the JPEG, the vector file. So it's going to be in an EPS file, uh, the line, the, the cut line, and then the actual uh, stitches with the tag down, with the placement, tag down, and the sand stitches. All right, that way you could experiment and kind of work on your own and you could kind of adjust them to your size, to the size that you need. All right, so uh, just one last plug for um, channel members. So it's $19.99 a month and all of kind of like the show notes, anything that I gather, PDFs, cheat sheets, I'm going to put it on the link onto our uh, channel membership there. All right, so we're going to have a lot of good stuff. All right, on that. So highly, highly recommend you to become a channel member. All right. Uh, other than that, okay, we're in October now. So it's like peak season. All right. I don't know how if it just started picking up for you guys. All right. Uh, I know October, October, November is kind of equal to, I would say, four to six months of our earlier months. All right. That's where everything kind of 
just starts coming together. All right. And then December comes. All right. Kind of slows down once once we get to the half of the weekend of the of the month of December. All right. Just as a side note. OK, uh, October, November, December. Those are my last three months here in Chicago. Then I'm going to be halfway half into the year in Virginia. And then the other half I move for good over to San Diego. All right. So I'm going to be doing a lot of moving. I'm going to have a lot of downtime where I'm going to stop. And that's where I'm going to do a lot of uh, show notes, PDFs and all that good stuff that we learned all year. All right. So definitely, definitely. We've been learning a lot this whole year. Uh, just like everyone like you guys, I've been learning a lot of different type of stuff, like kind of getting out of my elements. Uh, I always want to find different ways to do stuff because as you saw here, okay, there is no one way to do something. All right. So uh, I do want to thank everybody for um, for your input because we have so much knowledge here in our in our class here because everybody has different niches. Everybody has different type of equipment and different type of customers. So everybody has different experience. All right. This here, today's lesson, how to digitize Greek letters or how to embroider Greek letters. All right. Really, there's a thousand different ways to do it. I showed you one of one thousand. OK, this this kind of example is if you don't have a cutter. Right. If you don't have a cutter, it's not like it's the end of the world. Right. We can still kind of work around it. Right. As you kind of focus on a specific niche, you'll have more equipment to kind of make you go faster and more efficient. All right. But. Here. All right. Uh, very good project. All right. One of my favorite ones. Applicate jacket bags, chests. Right. Those are always good. All right. So. Um, if you're catching us on the replay, leave any questions, any comments down below, and I'll be sure to answer. All right. And for everybody else that was here today, thank you very much for uh, participating and hanging out. All right. I'll see you on the next one. Peace, everybody.